Recently, the Star Citizen New Player Guide quickly became the most popular video on this channel, but subsequently many of you have follow-up questions. This video seeks to answer many of those questions. I'm Farrister, and my channel is all about giving you useful or interesting content around simulation type games, including Star Citizen. Specifically, this video will cover some of the key questions asked by new or returning players, and I've included timestamps in the video description to help you find exactly what you're looking for. If you've watched my previous New Player Guide video, you'll know the important caveat about alpha testing, which is that although this is an incredible, beautiful game, it's by no means the finished article, and to help inform you about how things are, rather than how they might be, I try as much as possible to ground my responses in the here and now. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, that helps you to be notified of future Star Citizen videos, such as ship reviews or location spotlights, and helps me to grow the audience. Will my progress be wiped, and how often? At some point, in all likelihood, yes. In times gone by, it was quite often for every patch to bring a server wipe, which understandably was a big turn off for many early adopters. Since then, the persistence technology has matured somewhat, and the past few patch releases have taken place without a full server wipe. That means that all of the money earned in game, ships, weapons, items, and armor bought in game have all stuck with the players through the past few patches. Because this is an alpha test, there may be bugs or exploits in game in current or future patches, and sadly, because this is the internet, people will use them. In such instances, there may end up being a full wipe in the future, meaning you have to go back to having the ships and UEC that match up to your pledges on the RSI store. It is widely expected that before the game goes to live, whenever that might be, there will be a wipe of all alpha progress. It is my opinion that until then we may see infrequent wipes, perhaps once per year or so, but that's entirely my opinion, so take that with a pinch of salt. That said, I wouldn't let the threat of a server wipe put you off playing the game. Star Citizen rewards you for being skilled, and the skills you develop will help you out even when the game goes live. Moreover, it's a fun gaming experience, especially with friends. What's UEC and AUEC? UEC is an acronym, which stands for United Earth Credits. It's the standard currency in the Star Citizen universe. Think galactic credits or space dollars. In the release builds, they will be earned in-game and spent in-game. You get a small amount as part of various pledge packages, or if you're a big spender, you can buy currency chits on the pledge store. It's really not worth doing so at the moment, as the price is very steep. AUEC, or Alpha UEC, is exactly the same concept, but is a more temporary currency used in these alpha builds of the game before it goes live. That means that for players who have UEC as part of their pledge package, or maybe even those who pledge to UEC chits, are not spending their final game balance when playing the current patches. Mostly, Alpha UEC are earned and spent in-game. You earn funds by completing contracts, or trading for a profit, or mining for a profit, and then you spend your hard-earned Alpha UEC on ships, armor, clothes, weapons, ship components, or plush penguin toys. Do I keep the ships I buy with in-game currency? In the short term, yes. When you log out, it'll be available for you next time you log in. For the past few updates, your ship purchases have also persisted across patches to the game. However, in line with the answer to the first question on this video, at some point there is widely expected to be a change to that, and a wipe or reset is expected which would remove all in-game purchases from your account. That doesn't mean it's not worth buying a ship. In-game purchases would usually be my recommendation, especially given the steep out-of-game prices for many ships. Buying in-game, even for however long it is until a wipe happens, will give you the opportunity to fly a ship and get a feel for it if it's something you'd buy again. 
what happens if I log out in space or in a ship? If you log out, it's highly likely that you'll wake up in the last location you visited that you had to get permission to land at. That doesn't always mean you have to actually land as long as you've got clearance. That tends to be spaceports or space stations. Some ships have beds. If you're on a ship with a bed, you can use your interaction menu on the bed to log out. This will log you off, and the long-term plan is that you'll log back into your ship wherever you left it, assuming somebody didn't come along and shoot it to pieces. That's kind of in-game already. I say that cautiously because although a basic logout feature is present, it's not a consistent experience. It's quite possible to log out in your bed and log back in and be in your ship at the same place right as you left it. Quite often, however, at least in my experience, you're as likely to get a warning message saying the game has no idea where the bed is that you're trying to log into, therefore you're getting dumped back into a spaceport, and PS, you have to claim your ship back on insurance. So my suggestion is still to log out at a spaceport, but the feature is definitely improving over time. How important is insurance? And what's lifetime insurance? Right now, in the current build, the answer is not very important. If your ship is destroyed, adrift, or even just somewhere else and you can't be bothered to go get it, you hit the claim feature at a ship selection terminal and your ship will be returned to you after a timer has passed. It doesn't matter what insurance option is on your pledge package, and although you can pay in-game to expedite the request, you don't have to buy anything in-game either. In the future, it's expected that you'll have to pay in-game currency to keep your insurance topped up. Think of it as a longer-term maintenance cost, just like refueling or repairing. Therefore, the longer you have on insurance in your game package, the longer you can go without having to top up in-game. That's really important to many players, who wouldn't want to risk their real money invested into an in-game ship if that ship was destroyed, for example. Lifetime insurance is seen by many as the holy grail of the system. It tends to be attached to older packages, or when a ship is released as a concept sale. The idea behind lifetime insurance is just as it sounds. You're covered for as long as the game servers are alive. It's worth adding that although there are some comments from game developers on this concept, they're a little dated at this point and that there's a lot of potential to abuse some of these systems. So personally, and this is speculation, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the insurance plans evolved into something a little different as time goes on. What's an organisation? How do they work? And how do I join one? An organisation is a group of players who get together with a common purpose. Think of a guild or team in other games. What that purpose is could be as varied as your imagination. There are organisations who span across mining, piracy, trading, combat, roleplay, or many of the above. There aren't really any in-game implementations at this point, although it's hoped there will be in the future. As such, most organisations structure themselves out of game, with many also having websites or a Discord server to join. Organisations can be created and listed on the Roberts Space Industries website, which is also a good place to look for organisations. The Community tab has an organisations page where you can filter and find an organisation that looks interesting to you, and then I'd suggest reaching out to introduce yourself and find out more. If you're looking for an organisation that plays the current patches of Star Citizen regularly, you might also check out my organisation, the United Space Confederation, whose link is in the video description. Also, if you've got this far into the video, perhaps you might click that like button if you found the video helpful so far. How do I upgrade my ship? This is done in two phases. Firstly, you'll need to purchase a compatible upgrade for your ship. There are various ship part vendors scattered around the Stanton system who will sell you ship components in exchange for Alpha UEC. One of the best ways to find compatible upgrades is to go to the urkel.games website and play around in there. The Star Citizen YouTuber Subliminal also does some great guides for each ship. 
Once you've purchased your upgrade, you equip it through your Moby Glass. Hit F1 and then traverse to the Ship Equipment tab. Select your ship and then follow the UI prompt to replace what you want to replace. It's worth noting, sometimes you'll find your ship is in read-only mode. I tend to find that could be because your ship has spawned somewhere into existence already, or because you're in a different place to where your ship is. Generally speaking, you don't want to be spending a lot of money upgrading ships, with some exceptions. I'd suggest doing some research on any ship you're thinking of upgrading to see if it's worthwhile. When should I upgrade my armour, and is the rucksack worth the cost? I bundle these two questions into a single one, so there are a couple of benefits to upgrading your personal armour when you choose to do it, outside of just the cosmetic factor of looking good. Firstly, you can tailor your armour to the temperature conditions of different places you're visiting, so you can withstand extreme heat or cold much longer. Secondly, if you're likely to engage in personal combat, you can pick an armour that gives you your preferred mix of protection, mobility and utility in terms of being able to store gear within the armour set itself. When to upgrade depends on when you would find these benefits useful. Armour in-game is, generally speaking, relatively cheap, so can be paid for quite early on. I'd suggest after completing a couple of contracts it's generally worthwhile upgrading, not least because you add your own custom flair and personality to your character. But it's as important or unimportant as you choose it to be, based on your playstyle. As for the rucksack module, that may be worth it depending what you're spending your time doing. For those who may not be aware, this is a module with a considerable personal storage, at the expense of being a chunky monkey. It's particularly well suited for players who are hand mining, as the extra storage space gives you much longer in the field to rack up that glorious Haddonite. For players who are doing this kind of activity, i definitely say it's worth the cost to get one, otherwise I'd probably not bother. Do you have any other questions you'd like answered? Please ask, answer, or give me feedback on how to improve these videos in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button, and hopefully if you got this far, you might like to subscribe to the channel, or check out one of my location spotlight videos where I try to show just how good Star Citizen can look whilst also suggesting some useful locations you might like to explore. Other than that, thank you for watching.